You are listening to the voice of Kurdish American Radio for democracy, peace, and freedom. On Tuesday, February 23rd, Dr. Ralph Fertig, a 79 year old civil rights activist lawyer, will face the Supreme Court in a case that questions the very constitutionality of the United States Patriot Act. On Wednesday, February 17, I sat down with Dr. Fertig himself to find out more about this upcoming case and how his activism for the courts has ended up in the Supreme Court. I am Ralph David Fertig, and I have been a civil rights lawyer, a federal administrative judge, and I'm now a professor at the University of Southern California School of Social Work, heading up the social policy program. About 25 years ago, I was president of the Humanitarian Law Project, which is a private nonprofit organization, a non governmental organization, with permanent consultative status to the United Nations Human Rights Commission. I traveled to Turkish occupied Kurdistan to determine whether or not the conflict that was reported there was, as the Turks claimed, the disparate acts of terrorists or a legitimate national liberation struggle of the Kurds against oppression by the Turks. And I did a study, and according to the guidelines set forth by the Geneva Conventions, there's a protocol that defines the national liberation movement. And there are certain standards, they have to occupy a part of the territory of the nation, they have to have popular support, they have to have a chain of command that is able to exchange prisoners and a willingness to do so and so on. There's a, there's a whole protocol of criteria that they need. And uh, there's also a, an understanding that to be a terrorist one goes after innocent third party civilians. And I found that though there was a struggle, nobody was going after innocent third-party civilians, and that the PKK struggle was one at that point in time that adhered to the standards for the national liberation struggle. So I wrote the report and submitted it to the United Nations, uh, and which met in Geneva, reached there twice a year, the Human Rights Commission. And. Uh, have been in support of the rights of the Kurds ever since. Now, somewhat later, the Congress passed a law, it was the Anti-Terrorist and Effective Death Penalty Act in 1998, which said that what I was doing was criminal. There was a clause in the law which said that anybody who gives any kind of assistance later became refined to material aid to an organization that is named by the Attorney General, I'm sorry, by the Secretary of State, as a terrorist organization, can be charged with violating that law. And at first it was be sentenced for 10 years in prison, then later on under the USA Patriot Act it became 15 years in prison. So I went into court to seek an injunction, saying that I wanted to continue to work with the Kurds. I was bringing Kurds before the United Nations Human Rights Commission in Geneva so they could state their case. And I attended conferences in Rome and in Brussels and were seeking peaceful resolutions to the conflict in Turkish-occupied Kurdistan. But uh, according to that law, it was possible that I could be charged with aiding a terrorist group because the PKK was named by the Secretary of State as a terrorist organization. I didn't believe then it was a terrorist organization, but there was no way, no practical way, to appeal that designation. The Secretary of State doesn't have to give any reason. So what I was trying to do was to declare that clause in the law as being unconstitutional. It was unconstitutionally broad and vague because what I was doing was certainly not advancing any military 
activity. I wasn't contributing to any violence. In fact, I was trying to encourage and seek and train people, Kurds, in the use of nonviolent approaches by meeting and speaking to the United Nations and organizing nonviolent protests. Well, I got the injunction in the Federal District Court here in Los Angeles, but the government was unhappy and they appealed it. We went to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which upheld the injunction, and then the law changed. It became the USA Patriot Act. Then we did the same thing all over again. We got the injunction a second time. The government appealed it a second time. The appeal was upheld. And all this happened three times, spread out over many years. Finally, the government, having lost their appeal, the Ninth Circuit, which governs the California and Western States region, uh, the government appealed to the federal U.S. Supreme Court, which last fall accepted review of the case. And we submitted, my lawyer and I submitted the papers, the, uh, all the legal briefs, and uh, oral argument is scheduled for Tuesday, February 23rd, before the Supreme Court itself. My lawyer, a very fine attorney, is named David Cole. He's a professor of law at Georgetown University. And he's made many appearances before the Supreme Court. He's very highly regarded. And some of us have seen him argue here in Los Angeles before both the district court and then subsequently three times before the federal appeals court in Los Angeles. So we have a lot of confidence in him. We think he's got the law on his side. But the government argues that material assistance to an organization named as terrorist includes speech. My speaking in support of the Kurdish cause strengthens, so they say, the PKK. I don't even know who is a member of the PKK. I don't, if I work with Kurds, I don't ask, are you a member of the PKK? It's none of my business. My, my business is to see that there is peace. That's my mission through the Humanitarian Law Project and as an individual. I've been committed to nonviolence for most of my life. I was involved in the Civil Rights Movement, North and South. I was a freedom rider. I was taken to jail and beaten by white hoodlums in the jails. They broke every rib in my body. I wasn't going to be violent then. I'm certainly not going to be violent now. So I'm deeply committed to nonviolence. And I think that my advocating nonviolence is in the interest of the Kurds and the Turks and of the globe. Because if we can resolve these conflicts peacefully, we save lives, we save communities, we save hope, we save dreams, we save the heritage of the Kurdish people. So uh, I'm anxious to see how the Supreme Court will rule, whether I have the right under the First Amendment of the United States, the Free Speech Amendment, to speak in support of a group so long as I speak and do not engage in violent action, I should think that I am not violating the Constitution in any way. They want me not to speak out even for peace for this group of people who have been so woefully oppressed for so many, so many centuries the Kurds have been oppressed by one nation after another certainly during the, by the Ottoman Empire and now by the Turkish Empire, as well as in Syria, Iraq, and Iran. So my speaking out is consistent with the principles of American freedom. If the government wins its motion and my injunction is quashed by the Supreme Court, that means if I speak out in support of the Kurds, I can go to jail for 15 years. Well, they're not going to stop me. I'll speak out. I'll speak out no matter what.